On April 15th, the U.S. Supreme Court is going to hear the case of Association of Molecular Pathology versus Myriad. That case asks the question, are human genes patentable? In that case, I filed an amicus brief on behalf of medical organizations, including the American Medical Association, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American Society of Human Genetics, and others. I've also had grants from the Department of Energy and from the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to study the impacts of human gene patents on diagnosis and scientific research. The United States Constitution privileges innovation. There's actually a clause in Article I of the Constitution that gives inventors a limited time monopoly over their inventions in order to encourage progress in science and the useful arts. And so you can obtain a patent if you invent something that's novel, non-obvious, and useful. You also have to explain in your patent how the invention is made. You can't just patent something like a space machine that hasn't ever worked or been used before. You have to describe it. And so the exchange is you get a monopoly for a limited time in exchange for describing the invention so others can build on it. Now there's some limits to what can be patented, and those limits are part of a doctrine under Section 101 of the Patent Act and under the Constitution itself, which says that mental steps, abstract ideas, laws of nature, and products of nature can't be patented. In 1980, the Supreme Court heard the case U.S. versus Chakrabarty and came up with the idea that if you make something out of a product of nature, what you make has to be markedly different so that you're not actually patenting the product of nature itself. And that's the test that will be used in the Myriad case to determine if human genes are patentable. Why are gene patents important? Um, what's a gene? A gene is a unit of heredity in a person's body that's made up of chemical letters, A, T, C, and G. So it's a long list of those letters. It's important because a single change in that, a typo in this sequence, is, can cause a disease. A, a one-letter change in a long sequence causes the disease sickle cell anemia. Other typos in a gene sequence can cause things like breast cancer. This case asks, is a gene from a person's body similar to a plant from a wild mineral from the ground, or is it a human invention? In the case, Myriad argues that it took considerable human ingenuity to remove the breast cancer gene from the body and take it out of all the surrounding uh, chemicals in the body. They argue that by isolating it, they've given that gene new uses. It can be used for diagnosis. Uh, it can be used for further research. Um, they say that they define the gene. Uh, they've created something that uh, is a human-made innovation. They not only isolated it, but they uh, used uh, general molecular biology techniques to make synthetic copies of it. On the other hand, the petitioners are arguing that once the gene sequence, a product of nature in the body, was recognized, a myriad only used common scientific techniques to uh, further isolate it and um, make it available for diagnostic purposes. Um, to, the, um, to the petitioners, this would be like someone had you know, patented air and charged a royalty every time you took a breath. It's a product of nature that should be available uh, to all. They say that rather than being true to the purpose of the Progress Clause in the Constitution of encouraging innovation, uh, that this actually stops innovation because one entity controls all aspects of testing and research and can shut down anybody else doing research. In this case, there's as much a battle about policy as there is about law. On the one hand, proponents of gene patents say, we need money, venture capital investment in order to find genes and develop tests and treatments out of it. On the other hand, the opponents of the gene patents say, Surveys of scientists and other researchers suggest that most oppose gene patents, and in fact that gene patents stand in the way of innovation of the next generation of biotech products. 
For example, for under $1,000, one could have a genetic test of all 20,000 genes in the body. But if each gene patent holder charged over $3,000, as Myriad does, that test would become unaffordable due to the royalties. Uh, after a 30-year hiatus, since 1980 of not looking at such cases, the Supreme Court has taken a trilogy of cases. The first one, Bilski, uh, refused to grant a patent that covered the mental step and abstract idea of hedging in energy trading. Uh, the second, Mayo versus Prometheus, covered a law of nature, the fact that when you administered a certain uh, drug to people, you would have a bodily reaction of a certain type, uh, and that bodily reaction could not be patented because it was a law of nature. And this third case in the trilogy will round out the three parts of the exception by asking, where's the dividing line between what a product of nature is and what a patentable invention that just uses that product of nature as a springboard can be?